There's this new feature that is being merged into the Linux kernel. I think it's version 6.2, which, which will be coming, I think, in months. That is called TCP protective load balancing. Naturally, I was curious because I have no idea what this thing is. This is the first time I hear about load balancing at the TCP layer. And this is a very low level thing. So naturally, started researching and discovered that it's actually something Google just wrote a paper about literally two months ago, August 2022. Brand fresh stuff. I can still smell the pressing paper. Anyway, how about we actually go into the news, talk about a little bit and discuss what this thing is and very quickly, right? This is not going to be in detail. It's going to be quick news bite. Let's jump into it. All right. This comes from Foronix by Michael Larabel. I absolutely love this website. TCP protective load balancing PLB support heading to Linux. Picked up in this week in the NetNext code ahead of the Linux 6.2 merge window in December is support for TCP protective load balancing. What is that? TCP protective load balancing hooks into the Linux kernel data center TCP. We're going to talk about what that is in a minute code as part of congestion control. The protective load balancing provides host-based load balancing across switch links by making use of explicit congestion notification. I talk about this in very detail in my networking course, right? If you're interested, it's called ECN and other congestion data from uh, the transport layer to randomly change the path of the connection facing congestion. Currently, the Linux TCP PLB implementation only works for IPv6 for obvious reasons. We're going to talk about them and is disabled by default. So quickly, what is DC, DC TCP? DC TCP stands for data center TCP. It's a TCP protocol, but it's kind of modified a little bit just for the data center. Why? Because the data center, data center has different needs. Data centers, you know. Classically, the TCP, the classic TCP that we all know and love has the feature called conge congestion control. And what that does is if something in the routers in the middle, right, detects congestion, that means their receive buffer started to fill up, those routers will, they, they will try to tell the client that, hey, I'm experiencing congestion, slow down, right? And instead of actually just dropping the packets, Right? and having the uh, client discover the hard way that there is a congestion. So what they do is in the IP packet, they sit in like a nice bit called the ECN. It's like a, it's a zero and one. It's, hey, I just experienced congestion. So the IP packet, as it travels through the next of the routes, it will be received by the uh, server and the, the server will just echo it back. And when the client receive it, months later, of course, there's a whole round trip later, months, I say months, but it's a whole round trip. This is slow, right? So then the client discovered, oh, there's congestion. When there's congestion, what do we do? We literally drop the congestion window to one, one MSS, one maximum sec. So the speed just drops down. That's just how TCP congestion works. And then we also have the uh, slow start uh, threshold so that we now pick up the slow start algorithm and then congestion not if, uh, avoidance algorithm and, and we try to back up to where were we effectively the data center tcp what it does is like slightly smarter not only just say hey there is congestion no it will actually tell you how many bytes i have left in my buffer so that when the message is received back to the client from the IP headers, it will say, oh, okay, what is congestion? I'm not going to go back to C, uh, CWD in D1, right? That one uh, maximum segment size. No, I'm going to actually, eh, I'm going to play with this. I'm going to go down, but only slow enough so that I'm gonna not going to slow down a lot, but not high enough that I'm going to overwhelm the middle routers. So that's what DCP. But this is not what our topic is. However, data center TCP is still not enough to solve this congestion because yeah, of course, I'm going to slow down, but I don't want to slow down. I want to change my path. So what is a path here? You see, let's go back to uh, let's go to 
here wikipedia what is about my wikipedia enter yes here's wikipedia there's something called equal cost multipath routing you see when you make um when there is a router right and or a switch and when we talk about switches in data center they are usually referred to as layer three switches right they are smart switches that go up to layer three, not just, they actually play with packets, IP packets, right? So what they do is, what if I have multiple uplink, you know? I can go to this destination that you want me to go, but there is like five links. I can go to this port, to this port, to this port, to this port, right? Because that's how the internet works at the end of the day, right? There are multiple paths that leads to this in, uh, origin. But you might say, Hussein, just pick the shortest one. Sure. You can do that, but that's also not a good idea because if you always pick the shortest one, then the shortest one will get congested all the time. So what this algorithm that we're looking at is called equal cost multipath routing. In a nutshell, what it does is like it tries to distribute uh, the IP packet into multiple uh, paths by taking every single packet, hashing the four tuples in the packet, right and also going kind of a not only by the address we can go by the port too right so go up one layer up to get the tcp headers and get the ports right so get the destination port destination uh ip source port source ip right or just maybe just the source port or the source ip and then hash them and based on that hash select one of the ports uh one of the ports one of the flows and then always send these ips to this uh, to this flow, to this port. All packets that belong to the same connection, because we hash those four tuples, will go to the same path, right? Which is a good thing. Why? It's good because now we know that they're going to be sent one after the other, and eventually they're going to arrive in order, which is good for TCP, right? You don't have to reorder at the destination. But the bad thing is this equal cost multipath routing is not really a true load balancing, right? Because it just uses hash. What makes you think that the hash is going to pick one link will be overloaded and the others will not be overloaded? What are you going to see? Even if you distribute the hash evenly, some links will be uh, congestion and other links are not experiencing anything. That's why that brings us to the true load balancing that we talked about here, which is protective load balancing, which is a paper that is uh, discovered uh, by uh, that is written by Google with a lot of people reading it. This was written in August 2022. I think that's with the date, right? It says the copyright date, but yeah. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share all these resources. So what this does is, if it detects congestion, so they play the game, and instead of just taking the packet and try to do load balancing. They don't, they don't, they don't attempt to do load balancing. It says, hey, load balancing is not a good idea. I'm not gonna attempt even to try to load balance. It's impossible. They say, I am gonna balance based on congestion. So it's congestion awareness. So if I detect congestion, what they say, if this ECN came back to me, what I'm gonna do is just change the path might say, Hussein, how do you change the path? You can't change your source address and source port. If you change it, the connection will break. Aha, uh -huh, that's true, right? But if you did change the connection, then a, a different path will be selected based on the ECMP, equal cost multipath routing, right? It, a different route will be selected. That's why what multipath TCP actually tries to solve. It plays with, it, it presents you with a d single connection as a user, but it actually uses multiple connections. So the reason they don't want to use MTCP is because of this. It is expensive and time consuming to adopt schemes that require new switch processing. So what they do in, in short, they receive this ECN and upon receiving the ECN, they sit, they change something called the flow label. Yeah, Hussein, what is that? You never said something about the flow label. You told us that there are four pairs, the four tuples, and these four tuples are the only thing that get hashed. Ah, in IPv6, there is actually an additional that is called the flow label. And this is the IPv6, uh, this is the IPv6 RFC. 
Let's read through this one. A flow is a sequence of packets sent from a particular source to a particular unicast or multicast destination for which the source desires special handling by intervening routers. So there is actually a field called flow label in the IPv6. And if you set it, smart routers who understand IPv6 and understand the flow label how to read it they will add the flow label to the hash tuple so you have five and as a result if you hash five right you're gonna get one uh one destination one flow output right so hey i'm gonna go to port one so let's say this port now experienced congestion so the ecn will be set and then the receiver eventually will get it and then when it gets it, what they do is like, oh, okay, let me just, just change the flow labels. So all packets sent from this connection will just have a different flow label. So now you have a fleet of packets with different flow label, right? They will arrive the switch, and then because we hash it, now we're going to get a completely different hash, changing the flow to a different path. Very neat trick, but only works with IPv6. Let's read the, the pull request or whatever it's called, the merge... Uh, uh, comment. So this comes from uh, Mubashir Adnan Qureshi, which says this patch series adds PLB, protective load balancing, to TCP and hooks it up to DC TCP, which is the data center TCP. So they are enhancing the data center TCP. PLB is disabled by default. Of course, they don't want to wreak havoc. By the way, uh, Mubashir is from Google. His name is actually literally in the paper, right? He's right there, right? So he's the author, and he sent actually the request. They, so this is actually Google just wanting to push this upstream to Linux kernel so that it, it just bakes up for anyone to consume it. So they probably baked, compiled their own Linux and made the change locally. So they want to push this back. So let's continue. Protective load balancing is a host-based mechanism for load balancing across switch link. Host-based, that means the client right? sets it effectively. It leverages congestion signals, example ACN. I don't know what other congestion signals. I suppose if you actually experience uh, drops in packets, right? And the client uh, timeout for acknowledgement has reached. That's another congestion signal, right? But ACN is another popular one, which is better than actually dropping it outright. From transport layer to randomly change the path of the connection experiencing congestion. How smart is this? Actually, I it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant way to have the host actually change the path of the connection on demand, right? By just setting that uh, flow label effectively. Right? PLB changes the path of the connection by changing the outgoing IPv6 flow label for IPv6 connection implemented. In Linux by calling uh, this function. I have no idea what this function does. Because of this implementation mechanism, PLBs currently only work for IPv6 traffic. Of course, because I don't think the flow label exists in IPv4, does it? I just did a quick search in the IPv4 RFC 791 and didn't find anything. So elegant stuff. So this is actually interesting, you guys. I find it interesting. Of course, are we going to see this? Us? No, normal human being, we're not going to see this anytime soon. Uh, if you're using Google Cloud, you're probably going to get it for free, right? But us and our backend application, if you're using the internet, we're out of luck because the internet does not use IPv6. Maybe in another 20 years. Who knows? All right, guys, I wanted this video to be, to be shorter, but man, there's a lot of details here. I'm going to reference all the papers, all the stuff I discussed in the description below. Gonna see you in the next one. Gonna say awesome. Goodbye.